At this point, it would be a good idea to take a break from the theory and just start looking at a, an example or two. Let's take a little bit of time, look at the simple harmonic oscillator. You should be familiar with these guys, maybe from physics class. This is a simple linear model of a pendulum swinging back and forth. Let's present a model without any friction at first here. X is going to be the small angle of inclination to the vertical. The relevant second order linear autonomous differential equation is d squared x dt squared plus omega squared x equals zero. Omega is some constant. It's going to depend on mass and length and blah, blah, blah. It's just omega. If I write this in operator theoretic notation, what I get is d squared plus omega squared i applied to x equals zero. Now this is a nice system. It has a nice solution. All right, so starting with that equation, we can very easily read off the characteristic polynomial as being lambda squared plus omega squared equals zero. This has roots, lambda, that are plus or minus i omega. These are pure imaginary roots. And the real part is zero, which is really going to impact the form of the basis solutions. Remember, when you've got complex roots, then your basis solutions are what? Well, phi one is e to the alpha t cosine beta t, where alpha is the real part, beta is the imaginary part. In this case, that reduces to cosine of omega t. The second basis solution, phi two, is e to the alpha t sine beta t. That becomes sine of omega t. This leads to a general solution for x of t as being some constant c1 times cosine omega t plus your second constant c2 times sine omega t, where again, in practice, these constants are going to depend on the initial angle, the initial angular velocity. It's often written out with a little bit of algebraic manipulation into c times sine of quantity omega t plus psi, where this psi is a phase angle, phase shift, and this capital C is an amplitude. You don't need to do that. That's just something you often see. All right, so that's the approach using basis solutions. What happens if we do things using matrices? What is the matrix associated to this second order linear equation? Well, it is simply the matrix with rows 0, 1, and you always have 0, 1 for a second order linear equation. But the second row, that's what matters. In this case, it's minus omega squared 0. And it won't take you long to see that the eigenvalues for this 2 by 2 matrix are pure imaginary. They're plus or minus i omega. Now to compute the full solution to this system to exponentiate this matrix, what do we have to do? We have to compute the complex eigenvectors and then pack them into the matrix and then take the inverse and multiply all that stuff out. Blah. It's not so much fun. I kind of like using basis solutions. It's computationally a little bit easier to work with. Okay then, so with that approach in mind, let's expand on this example a little bit and add some friction to the system. This is often called damping in the context of a simple harmonic oscillator or vibration theory. You've got this thing, you let it go, and with some damping it just, you know, it goes... Okay, well, so much for that. What's the relevant equation? The relevant equation is the second derivative of x with respect to t plus nu. What's nu? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Nu is a, a constant, a positive damping constant, plus nu times dx dt plus omega squared x equals zero. This is the same equation as before. We just added a first order term, a friction term, a damping term. The characteristic equation for this system is lambda squared plus nu times lambda plus omega squared equals zero. Our old friend, the quadratic formula, tells us that the roots or the eigenvalues for this system, lambda 1, lambda 2, they are negative nu plus or minus nu squared minus 4 omega squared all over 2. This is going to break down into a couple of different cases that have 
very, very distinct physical manifestations. If the damping is small, in particular, if nu is less than two times omega, then these roots are complex. That discriminant is going to be negative. And that means that we're going to have sines and cosines with an e to the negative some constant t out in front. The real parts of these eigenvalues are going to be minus nu over 2. And what that means is that you have a what is called an underdamped solution. So the pendulum swings back and forth with an exponentially decreasing amplitude. If, on the other hand, your damping coefficient is sufficiently large, if it's bigger than 2 times omega, then your eigenvalues are real. That discriminant is going to be positive, and you're going to have a pair of eigenvalues that are both going to be negative. This leads to what is called an overdamped system. You pull that pendulum back, you let it go, and it just quickly dies off to x equals zero. Now, of course, there's a boundary case between these two. If the damping nu is precisely equal to twice omega, then the discriminant in this quadratic formula vanishes, and you have repeated real roots. You get minus nu over 2. This is still going to be uh, going to zero over time. This is called critically damped. There's, there's no oscillatory going back and forth. It just zoom. It goes down as quickly as possible. You can interpret what this case means in terms of both basis functions and matrix solutions.